The OnePlus Pad is finally available and I've had it for the last couple of weeks and I've traveled with it multiple times. So I'm able to share with you guys my experience from not only using it in an environment where I'm at home, but also traveling with this and using this as my computing device. The main benefit that I will say is that for the price point, this tablet will definitely punches above its weight class. I'm talking about more features than what you're paying for, but also a much better integration with OnePlus devices that we typically don't get with other tablets. I'm talking about transferring content, connecting your phone directly, having a representation on your display of your phone, and being able to copy things from it and to it, also sharing the internet from it. So making this a very well, uh, think of it like essentially an extension, like a small laptop that functions really well with your OnePlus plus device. This is TK and this is my review of the OnePlus pad as well as the pen and of course the keyboard after using it for the last few weeks. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe to make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. OnePlus was kind enough to send me the entire package to be able to check out. So we have the keyboard. This is a green keyboard that matches the color of the actual pad. We also have the pen. This is the stylo, what they're calling here. It's a OnePlus stylo that's also going to be very easy and very simple and well integrated into the tablet itself. And of course, the OnePlus pad. And again, it comes in that beautiful green color. The nice machine material on the back, and of course the OnePlus logo. Uh, primary camera on the front, primary camera on the back. We'll talk about the specifications. But in the box itself, you get, for the actual OnePlus pad by itself, you'll get the tablet itself with the charger, the built-in charger. This is the OnePlus charger, a little charge it very fast. And of course the USB-A to USB-C cable to provide us the ability of charging our tablet, of course, very, very fast. And here is the tablet. It looks absolutely fantastic. The machine material on the back kind of does more of a circular uh, edge uh, configuration all the way on the back. We have a single camera with a, uh, an LED flash on the back, of course, the OnePlus logo. On the top, when we're looking at it, we have one of the microphones, a volume rocker. There is no LTE or no uh, mobile data connected here. We're going to be leveraging that straight off of our device. Now, the USB-C connection is going to be on the right side of your tablet. There's two speakers as well, part of the quad speakers that we have in here, and of course, one of the microphones. On the bottom, we have access to the Pogo Pin connector. This is going to be interfacing directly into our keyboard, and it's married by the, uh, the compatible pins at the bottom here that we've docked the actual tablets into. On the right side, last thing, oh, sorry, on the left side, the last thing that we have here is the other two pair, the micro, uh, speakers, and of course, the power button. You notice I didn't say fingerprint sensor because there is none. We're going to be able to use front facing camera unlocking technology, so face unlock, pin, and of course, normal Android uh, configurations, but no fingerprint sensor on this. The keyboard itself, or the dock for the keyboard, uh, is very, very nice. It's an entire piece, one piece connected, and it does have a nice soft material on the back to protect the tablet. And we also have a mouse pad that provides us the ability of doing shortcuts for gestures directly on the tablet. A directional key, and of course, very nice and quiet, very good for travel. And when you're using this, you now actually have the ability of protecting your tablet. Because when you're not docked, you can actually go ahead, reverse it over, and then connect it in. And you'll notice that it does actually have a very nice way of configuring itself. So it actually mimics the existing configuration of the tablet. Now, when you're not using it like this, you protect it by closing it. And now the tablet is actually protected on the front as well as on the back. What I also like about this is that you're also able to use this in a configuration where you flip it over to the other side. So this is going to be the back side of the tablet and it disables the keyboard, although you still have it connected, but it's still connected magnetically. So you're not losing that configuration. It becomes really more of a tablet configuration. Uh, front facing camera experience. Let's go ahead and unlock. When we unlock the actual tablet, we are getting access to the entire beautiful, um, slightly over 11 inch uh, diagonal uh, display. Now, this is obviously not the entire display. We do have a bezel on the side, but that's again, typical to tablets. You have to have an experience or somewhere where you'd be able to hold your hands without touching the UI element. So you're not actually configuring or moving things inadvertently when you're holding the tablet in your hands. As I mentioned to you guys, this is the OnePlus Pad. Uh, the, that's the international model. Uh, screen size is 11.61 inches. And this is running the Dimensity 9000 processor that we have in here. Uh, the battery is a size of 9510 milliampere. We have eight gigs of RAM expandable with an additional four directly within the Oxygen OS implementation. An eight megapixel front facing camera and a 13 megapixel main facing camera on the back, capable of shooting 1080p frame, 1080p resolution on the front and 4K resolution on the main sensor on the back. And we'll talk about that. It is running Oxygen OS 13.1, which is essentially Oxygen OS's uh, version for tablets on top of Android 13. So very nice and very easy to configure a configuration in there. The main benefit that I would probably say is 
the experience that you're going to get here is really augmented by not only the stylo or the pen that we have in here and you'll notice that the, the name oneplus also still resides on here on the right there is no buttons on it but there isn't a little bit of a groove here that tells you where this is going to basically mount on your tablet and what i mean by this is the configuration is going to sit here on the right side remember that little area that i told you about the uh, the band this is basically kind of like almost like a charging pad directly for the pen when you put that in that spot it automatically gives you a visual indicator letting you know what the battery percentage is and that it is charging it itself. You'll also notice it that it's sitting here on the top right and that's going to give you the indication of how much battery left you have. It's connected via Bluetooth and once you disconnect it, it works just the same way as you'd expect it. You pair it in the UI and then you're able to basically go in there, jump into the notes application and uh, since I have it on the wrong pen here, I'm able to configure it and just say, you know, Well, let's fix it here and question mark and I always love to do this I don't know why but you get the configuration and the information here overall pen input on this is going to be very nice and you're able to basically just change it and you can see that that there's actually very very little the, the tracking on this works very very nice and when you're done you can either save it or go ahead and just start basically deleting everything and you get everything configured to the way you want it um, overall, what I would say, this, this is really good from the sense of functionality because it makes this pen not only part of the ecosystem, again, when you're not using it, it actually does hold very nicely directly into the tablet it's, and very simple. Uh, I've had it many, many times where I put it in my backpack with the pen connected to it. And when I pick up uh, the tablet directly out of my uh, backpack, it just stays in there very nicely. As far as single core and multi-core performance uh, in Geekbench 6, you, you're not going to be disappointed. Again, this is a flagship processor from MediaTek, the Dimensity 9000, and of course, 1700 for single core. 4299 so basically 4300 running on the multi-core uh, this is more of a reference it is not by any means an indication of saying this is exactly how this is going to perform your day-to-day -day usage and functionality is going to be absolutely fantastic not only are we looking at a slightly higher than average uh, display on, the, on this device, but we're also looking at a few functional options that we don't usually get with most tablets. Namely, the ability of setting our refresh rate to 144 hertz. This is something, not only is it more, but is it actually even higher than what the OnePlus 11 does as far as 120 frames per second. So higher than standard resolution display, of course, 120 hertz, uh, sorry, 144 hertz is gonna be the ability of going in there. Of course, customizations, all the different things in there. In the battery section, if we scroll down down directly into the battery area you're also able to get some of the performance mode that we're able to do and this is the high performance mode let me just move this down here that when you turn that on you're able to use the full potential of the Dimensity 9000 it does eat up a little bit more battery but it is more beneficial for us to know that we have the ability of driving this tablet to the full potential whenever we need it either for gaming rendering video editing video or doing any of that content directly on the device there's a few applications that are installed here. So Google Space or Kit Spaces, this is a Google application. Uh, you're able to launch an application drawer, obviously your standard uh, community app, wallet, and all the different options. Installed basically uh, Disney Plus, Geekbench, Call of Duty Mobile, and of course all the Google Play services are installed since this is supporting Google services. Now, we are going to talk about the Screen Connect op option that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. And one thing I will say that that feature currently is not available on the OnePlus 11. This is going to be coming in as part of an update, I think later on from what I understand. But surprisingly, actually, this is uh, functional on my Find X6 Pro. And that's mostly because, uh, again, both of them are sharing similar codes because this is running at, the, at its base ColorOS. Oxygen OS leverages the ColorOS functionality. And surprisingly, when I was able to test it out, this actually worked quite well. And that's basically why we're able to see our device here and I'm able to control it. And that's what I was showing you guys overall. This functionality is going to be coming directly into OnePlus devices. And one thing you'll notice, even though I'm actually still using the phone, the screen is off. It's not locked by myself. It turns off after an amount of time when you're not using it. And you're able to leverage using it here. So I can go in here and then see if there's any updates. And of course, go ahead and updating uh, all of my application and then get everything running. The beautiful thing about this is that this is now a seamless integration. I can minimize this. I can just go ahead and hit the little minimize. And you'll notice right there when you see the pad connect, it's actually syncing up my notifications straight off my phone onto the tablet. And that's one of the main benefits. So let's go ahead and press the uh, connect option. Now currently it's connected to the, one, to the Find X6 Pro, but it's going to work with the OnePlus 11 just exactly the same. We have screen mirroring functionality. This is the ability of screen mirroring my phone. That's what we saw in there. We also have the ability of using content sync. This is where you're able to see your clipboard and your media directly in from there and be able to transfer data between the two. App relay, transferring notifications from one to the other, and that's what we were looking at before. And this is gonna be the feature that is currently not working even on the Find X6 Pro. 
and that's the ability of sharing my data directly from my phone to my device. Uh, but you'll be able to share your mobile data, calling sharing and messaging sharing directly when they are connected. So the benefits here go beyond a standard uh, tablet and phone relationship by being connected over Bluetooth, but also transferring content and responding to notifications from one over the other and leveraging what um, Oppo and OnePlus have access to, which is called PC Connect for the desktop that was previously only on their mobile devices. Now we have it directly between the phone and the tablet. And what I really love about this is the ability of being able to basically, well, let's go ahead and open it up. And again, the phone is still turned off. This is one of the main benefits here. I can jump in directly into the gallery and let's say I do like this picture. I'm gonna go ahead and go back a little bit. We don't have access to gestures when we're in this mode. So we're gonna go ahead in here and let's say I like uh, this, well, I'll go ahead and copy a couple of images and let's go ahead and say here, these two, and I like this one as well. So we're gonna press and hold on them and you'll notice that it changes the icon. Now this little icon, I can move it to the left. I have four items and it says on the top right, copy to tablet and I'm going to release. The data transfer is instantaneous. It's almost like Wi-Fi sharing. I can go ahead and view. You'll see there's a whole bunch of files in there. And not only am I able to, let's go ahead and basically minimize this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. That's the video I shot before. It was one of the B-rolls in the video. I'll go ahead and click it. And we're also able to see the images that I was sharing. So here, this is the squirrel that I was talking about. Now this image was shot obviously on the one, on the Find X, uh, 6 Pro, and I'm also able to look in and see all those beautiful tulips. Oops, let, let it focus uh, from the garden that was uh, during this uh, couple of weeks ago when I was actually starting to use this tablet with me. Overall, very nice, very simple to configure. And again, if you don't want it and you, don't, you just basically wanna close it, you can go ahead and close it. You can maximize it when you're using this type of an experience. So let's go ahead and use it in full screen. And now at this point, so let's go ahead and click close on those. I can actually do the exact same thing, but the actual actual product here is sitting on my phone. It has not even transferred to my tablet. So that's one of the main benefits. And again, you can transfer things to it as well. The UI is very nice, very smooth. We have obviously the Google feed on the left and everything that you normally expect from uh, using Oxygen OS on a device. This is pretty much the same with some unique features that are built in directly for the tablet. Now, one of the things I really like about the keyboard is the travel. It's very nice, it's quiet. It doesn't have a lot of the clicking noise. So it's traveling with this, using it at the airport. As I'm showing you guys right now, I used it in multiple different experiences when I went over to Austin, Texas, as well as when I had the opportunity to go to Chicago. And one of the biggest benefits that we got there is that it's small, it's portable. The keyboard actually has a very small, short distance. It does not add too much to uh, actually space to the tablet. So if you're able to say basically this, if you're able to put the tablet on your, on your lap and it sits on your lap flat, this keyboard is going to keep the exact same space directly from your tablet, uh, from your tablet itself. Unlocking on this, as I showed you guys before, this is going to use face unlock. So let's go ahead and hit the space bar. It's going to look at my face and unlock the device. And it is pre-configured in here. You're able to customize other options, but this is going to be the fastest way to unlock. Um, obviously, this is going to be one of the better options in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just share with you guys to say, and then say, oops, let's go ahead and go back here. And typing on this is actually a lot more fun and easier than using, let's say, a keyboard that's a Bluetooth configuration. Because at the end of the day, this also protects your display. Again, keep in mind, if you flip the tablet to the other side, it's going to disable the keyboard functionality and it becomes magnetically connected as just a regular tablet. So you can see right there, the magnets kind of still hold it there. It's not going to have any problems. The pen stays where it is, the tablet keyboard stays where it is, and you're ready to basically go ahead and unlock your tablet and use it the way you want to. Before we go into the sound experience, let's go ahead and jump down into uh, the actual sound configuration that we have in here. We have the Do Not Disturb sound option, all the different configuration, but we also have Dolby Atmos configuration built into this. So you're gonna definitely be enjoying that auto tuning that we get in there. For that, we're also gonna be enjoying listening to our favorite song, Alex Crindo Jumbo by NCS Release. We're gonna go ahead and jump in, bringing it over to roughly where the main drop comes in. And we're gonna go and put in the volume at 100%. Now, this is not gonna be the way you wanna be able to listen to it, but I wanna share with you guys, how does this sound? How does that experience get better when you have quad speakers in here and how well tuned these speakers are? Jack it up. Absolutely fantastic, very nice, and definitely very full sound. And the quad speakers make it so that you're never gonna be able to basically block the entire speaker array when you're holding it. Nice little bezels on the side to be able to hold the tablet when you need to use it as a tablet. And if you wanna be able to use it to enjoy content and actually work on it, split screen functionality becomes very nice. 
We have gesture support in here. So if I can swipe down with three fingers, you'll notice I just took a screenshot. And if I'm in an application and I'll say I want to be able to open up another thing, I can just swipe up three and it minimizes everything. Uh, the ability of running split screen functionalities in here is very nice. We're also able to open up pop-up windows. So I can go into the three and I can go into a floating window. This is very nice, similar to what we've seen before. And I'm able to customize it and of course either open it, close it, and or I can just basically put it away. We can also be able to obviously open up split screen functions. So let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up on the left side. It docks itself till you're ready to use it. Let's go ahead and open up YouTube on the right. And of course, this is really nice. We are also still able to do floating windows. So let's go ahead and do, uh, we'll do photo, photos in a floating window configuration. So that kind of becomes the functional option here. We'll bring this up here and we're going to go to this pair. And now I have three different applications running at the same time, floating window. And this is, keep in mind, this is actually, inter we're able to interface with this, bring it up, minimize it. And if I'm actually start interfacing here, go back in this and swipe back home, this goes back in there. And of course I can close it. Uh, this still also supports picture in picture. So you're able to open up, let's say Netflix or Hulu, and this is going to be able to jump into a picture in picture experience very nicely and very easily. The display is gorgeous. It's a large display, very nice configuration. You see that there is no delay, no stuttering, no issues at all in the UI element. I think that's the biggest benefit here. Not only is it a nice functional aspect ratio, but it also works very nicely. Now, last thing I do wanna do here real quick is we wanna be able to do a calculation on the refresh rate on this display. 144 Hertz is advertised and that is exactly what we're getting. We're able to demonstrate it here. I have it set to high. So your display will run and will configure itself to run optimally for whatever app you're using. Opening up the camera application is pretty straightforward. We have night shot, video, photo, selfie, and under more, we have panorama, slow-mo, and time-lapse. Um, under photography, as you can expect, 13 megapixel camera on the back and eight megapixel camera on the front will give us the ability of getting basically uh, pretty decent shots if you're going to use this to capture content. Now, as far as the camera sample that we're gonna jump into, uh, as you can see a little bit of a preview in there, we're gonna be doing video on the front facing and the main camera on the back since there was only two. And it's gonna be 1080p on the front and 4K 30 frames per second on the back. And that's gonna be the best resolution. For video, this is gonna do absolutely great. And for content capture, you're always uh, also gonna be able to capture really good content at 4K. The dimensity is definitely a more powerful, powerful enough to be able to provide us even more experiences. The camera optics that we have in here is basically what's limiting some of the experience in there. Um, again, eight gigabytes of RAM expandable with an additional four with, with the built-in ROM and of course 128 gigs of internal storage. This also does support OTG functionality. So you're able to hook up an external storage to this. It'll work perfectly fine. There is no video output that's currently configured in here. So if you connect this, let's say to a USB-C to the HDMI converter, unfortunately, this is not going to work right now. This is not a feature that's built in. We're gonna start off with the front facing camera here on the OnePlus pad. The biggest thing obviously here is that we have a wider angle camera, which is really good, especially when you're trying to do video calls or you're trying to basically record a video like I'm doing right now. And you're able to basically hold it at arm's length, but still get a pretty decent experience. We have a 1080p maximum resolution here, but we are able to turn on the AI modes in here as opposed to when we use them on the main sensor on the back, it drops the camera from 4K to 1080p. But this should be a pretty good example of audio and video. If you're uh, trying to figure out how does it look like in video calls and so on, this is gonna be a pretty good example. Now, what we're seeing here essentially is a one camera setup in the back. This one's gonna shoot 4K 30 frames per second. And of course, what we're getting here essentially is the best camera on this device. It's not intended to be for video, obviously, since you're gonna be using the front facing to be on video, Zoom calls, or something like that. But in case you wanna be able to capture any kind of content outside, this should be a pretty good example. Now, there is a AI mode that provides a little bit more enhancement, but it drops the video to 1080p. But this one is actually what you're supposed to be able to get at 4K from the main sensor on the OnePlus pad. Uh, you're able to obviously leverage the screen casting or the, uh, basically the screen re mirroring option. We have screen recording, all the different toggles that you normally expect, power saver mode and all of that, and nearby share, of course. Uh, Wi-Fi and configuration here, you can even see the percentage on the stylo and it at least tells you what's going on there. To be able to configure the stylus or set it up, you first obviously need to pair it. Once you pair it into there, there's also the ability of updating it. There's a version of software that's currently running in there. And of course, screen off note, if you wanna be able to do that, double tab stylus and set up the functionality that you want in there. And this one actually going into the pen input, you're able to double tap on the actual pen. There is a touch sensitive area. 
and that allows you to jump between the current tool and the previous tool and of course show color uh, palette and this is going to be more specific to drawing applications and as you saw there the experience is very nice the front facing camera although not 4k still provides us decent imagery and of course the ability of using and leveraging the 4k on the back when you're using the the, the tablet is definitely going to work great keep in mind you're more than capable of shooting the content on your oneplus uh, device both on the main cameras and on the front facing camera there and the main thing is you can just transfer that content straight to your tablet very easily very quickly again either via nearby share or using the, uh, the functionality the screen mirroring functionality and that they're calling path connect directly onto your tablet now we do have the game launcher this is something that we've seen in the past before built in obviously to oxygen os uh, this does, gives us the ability of going between balance mode pro gamer mode and the ability of changing the game focus options screen recording touch optimization uh, of course orientation lock quick uh, quick option voice changer system status which i really like gives me the ability of seeing not only the refresh rate cpu and gpu configuration uh, on this which allows us to actually have a better understanding of how things are going this is Call of Duty Mobile, as you can imagine, it's updating itself. Uh, I think it probably just got a massive update recently. And one of the biggest benefits in here is that the large display gives us that experience at its best. Now, it is not a 16 by nine aspect ratio, so just be aware that it's gonna be a little bit taller than it is wider, but it's still very enjoyable. And I think that's the biggest benefit. There's no question that the Dimensity 9000, a flagship processor, is going to be able to handle anything you throw at it. And this is really where the versatility becomes between a OnePlus device and of course, connecting it directly into the OnePlus pad. Now, I demoed this on the Find X6 Pro purely because that just happens to be running similar experiences when it comes to the operating system. As we all know, Oxygen OS is based on Color OS with optimizations done for OnePlus. And once that function is built in or the update comes into the OnePlus 11, this is going to be absolutely the exact same. And even taking it to the next level, being able to share my internet connection directly from my phone, directly onto the actual tablet. And this makes it so that you never have to really purchase a, an LTE or a 5G version of that. Your phone's connection, which is a 5G connection, will be leveraged directly over. Content is shared, notifications are shared. This is literally like the PC Connect functionality that we've seen from Oppo in the past, brought in over to a tablet and a phone, which makes it so much more functional than any of the other options on the market. The cameras that we have in here are great for content capture as far as when you're being in a conversation, in a call or something like that, there's not gonna be any issue. 4K recording on the back in case you happen to have or you want to be able to pick up uh, like, you know, uh, like a recording of something. And it does a decent job as you saw with the video. And I recommend you using your OnePlus 11 to capture the content and transferring it over to the pad because that's going to be the best integration of functionalities. You get the best cameras on the OnePlus 11 and you get the functionalities of the pad with a bigger display to edit and of course produce. And if you want to be able to upload things directly to YouTube or anything like that and you don't want to do it from the pad, you can transfer that content back into the OnePlus 11 and then straight up upload it directly from there. A very nice integration. My hope is to be able to do a little bit of a follow-up on this to share with you guys my experience after using it with the update on the OnePlus 11 because I feel like that kind of uh, completes the true experience that I feel like most of us will want to be able to do. I can say that after using OnePlus and Opal devices for many, many years, and I actually use PC Connect, a similar process that what they're doing here between their phone and their tablet to connect my OnePlus and Opal devices directly in, sorry, I can say that after using Oppo and OnePlus devices for so many years, I and also using PC Connect, this is a different version of the Pad Connect that they're using in here, enabling us to connect Oppo devices to our PC, that this is such a really good multitasking, functional thing that we love doing, or at least I enjoy doing as well, with my phone directly with my computer and now being leveraged on the mobile side by using it with the tablet, that gives us the ability to be not only mobile, but also super functional and really good at multitasking. I wanna say thank you very much to OnePlus for allowing me to check out the OnePlus pad uh, ahead of uh, availability, and of course, sharing with you guys my experience. And my hope is to be able to kind of circle back with you guys in a little bit once we have the update on the OnePlus 11, and then bring that all together and share with you guys that beautiful combination of the OnePlus pad and the OnePlus 11. Like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in the next video.